Hi, I'm Tom Fox, Squadron's Customer Service Manager and an award-winning modeler. Today we're going to build a pre-painted kit like this one. Last year, we sold kits that you could paint like this and hang from a hobby tree. This year, we have beautiful kits like this P51 that you can build very easily, requires very little glue, and it's a great family project. Now let's get at it. Here are the tools which are needed to build a professionally painted kit. This is a sprue nipper, which is used to cut the parts from the sprue tree. Here's a scalpel, which is used to cleanly shave away some of the excess plastic after you cut the part from the sprue tree. It's flexible and sharp. Here's a value packed assortment of sanding sticks. What's included are five different grades of sanding sticks. We have the tri-grit, extra fine, fine, medium, and coarse. And those who are on a budget, this makes an excellent value. We also sell the sanding sticks separately. This is our plastic weld, comes with a brush applicator, very easy to use, excellent value, and bonds strong and very quickly. What we're going to do is cut the parts from the sprue trees with the premium sprue nippers. This of course is one of the horizontal stabilizers and the other one. Once you cut the part from the sprue tree, there's always some excess plastic, so you take your scalpel and what you want to do, so the part does fit firmly into the slot of the model, you want to shave away with your scalpel the excess plastic so that you create a nice flush edge at the same time. Then you take a sanding stick and make sure that it's even more flush so that you have a clean surface to apply one of the horizontal stabilizers to the tail section. You can never have enough sanding sticks and they work great. There's our clean edge on the first horizontal stabilizer. Then you do the same thing with the other one. Cut the excess plastic. The reason why I cut all the parts from the from the sprue tree in this kit is because it's there aren't too many parts to the kit, obviously, and I have a better visual of seeing the parts when they are removed from, from the sprue tree. I have a box at home that I keep the parts in and they're separated. I've got a box with several different compartments and sometimes I label them if they're really complicated, if there are a lot of parts included in the kit. I'll have like a label maker. I just like going to the parts immediately, having the clean parts ready to put together. This kit has two different options for the exhaust ports. The reason why I'm using glue for the, uh, for the horizontal stabilizers is because they do fit snugly into its place, but to really have a, a solid bond, of course, um, I always like to use a plastic weld. This is particularly good in the case where you're using these as holiday ornaments and you can use them year after year. We have a variety of these pre-painted kits, one of which is a Spitfire Mark 5B, the Falkwolf 190A, F-86 Sabrejet, the P-40B slash C Warhawk, F-4F Wildcat, P-51D Mustang, the P-47D Thunderbolt, and the F-4U Corsair. I'm going to glue the port landing gear door to the landing gear strut. Okay, at this point I'm applying a little bit of glue to the port landing gear door and strut. It snaps in firmly, but again, it adds permanency so that you can use the professionally painted kit year after year for your hobby tree. One of the advantages of using the plastic weld is that it won't stick to your kids. It evaporates quickly, as you can tell. What the plastic weld does, it actually melts the plastic together so that you have a permanent bond, and essentially, it acts as one piece. All right, at this point, I'm going to attach the wheel to the to the port landing gear. It's always a good idea to dry fit, especially when it comes to smaller parts, to dry fit before actually applying glue. The reason why I dry fit it, just to make sure we have the proper fit before applying the glue. Now in this case, I actually have to shave out a little bit of the, the hole where the strut post fits into the wheel. You take your scalpel and you shave out the interior of the inside of the wheel so that you're making the diameter a little bit larger to where the landing gear post will fit cleanly and snug. Then after doing so, dry fit again, and if it works, if it looks like you have a clean fit, then go ahead and apply the glue. Okay, let's try that. That should have been just enough, and it was. Again, I'm gonna apply a little bit of plastic weld to where we have more of a permanent fit. Set that port gear aside, 
and go on to the next. How you can tell the difference between the port side and the starboard side, port being left, the word port has four letters and hence the word left has four letters. That's always a good way to tell. Okay, now in the starboard wheel that I'm assembling to the strut, I tested the fit on this one, or dry fitted, and this one is nice and clean. And again, apply a little bit of the glue to wear more of a permanent bond. Because remember, we are using these for your hobby tree. At this point, we're going to glue the both the starboard and the port landing gear, first working with the port side, again, being the left. We're going to use the same technique as we did before. We're going to dry fit making sure that we don't have to do any modifications so that we have a proper fit. And in this case, I don't have to do it a second time. We have a perfect fit. I will apply more plastic weld so that we have our permanent bond. The plastic weld still works even on a pre-painted kit. Now we're applying the starboard gear to the wing and we're doing our standard technique of dry fitting to make sure we are ready to bond. Let me just shave this out. I think that's enough. I think that's it. And again, we're going to apply a little bit of plastic weld to the starboard gear. I'm going to set that side to dry. All right, now we're going to put the canopy over the cockpit. And I'm dry fitting this as well to make sure that we have a good, clean fit. And it looks like we do. In order to make the clear part as shiny as possible, of course, there's always dust around. You want to wipe out the inside of the canopy so that you have a bright, nice, shiny glass. Pipe what I'm cleaner, using is a pipe cleaner, which is real, which is real soft, soft, so that you can, so that you buff, can buff out the inside, the inside of the canopy, of the canopy so, so that you have a nice shiny surface, surface replicating glass replicating to the best you can. It's always great finding a household to tool that can be used as something else, kind of a secondary or tertiary it's use great item. A house. And you save money that way as well. Okay, there we have a nice shiny surface. Looks good. So at that point, trying not to touch the inside of the canopy, we can go ahead and apply a little plastic weld to those points where the canopy will be adhered and apply the canopy. And again, take your pipe cleaner, and this you could always do at any time after the build, but just to demonstrate, you can get that canopy real nice and shiny with the softness of the pipe cleaner, just like that. Look at that, nice and shiny replicating glass. And what I want to do at this point is apply the propeller assembly items. Let me see how this goes. Okay. We will attach the propeller assembly, and this guy will go on first, and this is what the propeller will rest on, replicating the real P51. So that'll just, this is a really, really clean fit, and the propeller will rest right on the notches that you see on that hub piece. Just like that. We'll take our plastic weld and apply to those points where the propeller will rest. Plastic weld does a fantastic job. Bonds in seconds, nice and cleanly. And you can adjust the, the propeller at any position, but I always like to have mine a little bit, a little bit cantered off center. All right, and then what we're gonna do is take the spinner, and we'll go on the prop, and we'll take our plastic weld, Proper amount of glue and the spinner goes on. Perfect. Okay, now comes the tail wheel that we will fit on. Again, doing our dry fit procedure. Fits nice and snug, but I will apply again the plastic weld. The gear needs to be the strongest points, of course, because all the weight is resting on the gear. So you definitely want to use plastic weld so that it is more permanent. And you want to make sure that it's positioned perfectly up and down, which it is. Looks like a good fit. And now we will attach the, the wing to the underside slots. And we will again make sure that we have a good fit before actually gluing. At this point, we'll attach the wing to the underside slots, applying more plastic weld to where we have more of a permanent bond. Okay, there we're done. There's your P51D, all assembled. Bright and shiny, no need to paint, and ready for display, and also hanging from your hobby tree. Well, there we have it, folks. The classic P51D Mustang, all completed, easy to assemble, pre-painted, and remember, there are eight different aircraft to choose from at squadra.com. If you like what we have to say and you want to see more of this, please subscribe to Squadron TV or make your friends subscribe, or even your puppy. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. I am Tom Fox. <laughs>
that's it for today. Why can't I remember that? 